All right. <laughs> Here we come, but we, we kept waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally it spit us out. All right. Uh, it's good to be here. We want you to pray for our sick and afflicted to pray the Lord will touch and help uh, there and all the needs. And there's, there's others that we have heard about and some that we ain't, but we do know that they need prayer tonight uh, and Monday morning. So pray for him and pray the Lord will touch there as they clean out the other side of his neck and then Doris. A little David's wife, they carried her to the doc hospital when he couldn't, wasn't able to breathe. And uh, so you pray for them, pray for David, because he can't be with her. He's very, uh, Rose said, very upset, and, and that's natural. Uh, today, uh, Wayne served, he went well. He, he left to be at church, uh, but they won't let him drive uh, but, uh, because he's on medication. Uh, I was asking Rosie, how are they going to know? Uh, he's goofy anyway, right? And, I know he's watching. That's why I said that. Uh, he'll have a response on the, on the thing in a minute. But it's good to be here tonight. Let's remember Austin. You have you heard anything, Lisa, about him? Well, I talked to her last Thursday, but he did he did go in the hospital. He got dehydrated. God help. And I didn't know that Wednesday night when I was here. I didn't know until the next day, but yeah. Uh, Thank you. Let's remember him, Marilyn. Uh, let's pray for uh, the children that's sick and afflicted, and uh, the schools over in the Dalton, Mary County way, right, just starting back this week. So, uh, who knows how much sickness life will be over there? Uh, so, let's pray for them and keep praying for the churches and keep praying for uh, the needs. There's so many people that's lost their loved ones. There's some people that's gone out of this world. Just left and right, and uh, uh, so many funeral homes today that are just packed full of people and families, and uh, it's just a lot to pray about. Homes and hospitals and rest homes, uh, people are in dire need of prayer. Our nation's in dire need of prayer. Uh, you know, I, 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 I read some, I just read some uh, news topics as I was. Uh, flipping through to get to more shows and stuff and uh, you know it seemed like that uh, people are, are really beginning to open their eyes in some way I hope they continue to open their eyes and like I said I, I hope that uh, American people lets the whole world know that uh, the ones in office don't speak for us on the majority that we are still going to stand for our freedom and our liberty and be what God wants us to be and uh, so I praise the Lord for that. And so let's do keep praying. The Lord will touch and God will help. Pray for our men and women that are just put in all kinds of situations. Uh, just out of whim of what somebody wants. So do pray that the Lord will help in all this. All right, unspoken anybody? Anybody got a personal one on your heart? Do you need to remember spraying camera? Just remember all these that are sick, they're all around us. Amen. That's right, Eric. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I, I see it every day at work. That somebody knew. Um, I did hear tonight. They're waiting on their test to come back. Remember uh, Roger Jackson and his family. They're waiting on the test to come back and see what's going on with them. Just remember them. Amen. Let's keep Chris Russell in our prayers. The Farmer family. Uh, Doug, Doug was his name, wasn't it, Rosie? Uh, yep. Farmer, uh, his wife passed away. Uh, his son, Billy. Uh, our boys know Billy, uh, Farmer. And so uh, let's pray for the Farmer family. And uh, I, I didn't go by there today. And so I don't know how many names are on there. One funeral home. I do know the Wade family lost a loved one this, this past week. So I do pray for them. And... Uh, the Hedrick family, they buried uh, the, the, the wife yesterday and uh, the husband today. So uh, we'll be much in prayer for all of this. I remember Mary Ann Stan, I talked to her today, she's been real sick, and uh, I'm sorry to remember my brother. Amen. Amen. We've had call-in uh, requests, and, uh, uh, you know, there's sometimes people calls in requests that you can't just bring out. Uh, but people can know that there's need of prayer. We don't have to say what it's about or what's going on because 
really, uh, if the only way you can pray for somebody is to have your nose in their business, you ain't much of a prayer, no way. Uh, so uh, that's pretty blunt, wasn't it? <laughs> No, that's good, but uh, all right. Uh, but let's do to pray for them and pray the Lord to touch. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Pray God's blessings upon us all, and and that God will touch and help. Leon, would you ask the blessing, please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for watching over all of us. Thank you for watching over me. Yes. Every day tonight, you preach the word. Yes, God. Good service, man. Hey man, well we're gonna try a little bit of this song, Glory Land Way. Uh, I don't know, I might have to change it. But our old throat's just about shot. Uh, this old insulation don't taste near as good as it did 20 years ago. <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, so, uh, but let's do pray. Well, I'm in the way, love, bright and shining way. I'm in the Glory Land Way. Hell in the world by Jesus' same day. Yes, I've been the glory that way. I've been the glory that way. I've been the glory that way. Well, heaven is there right away for what we For I've been the glory that way. Listen to the call of the gospel call. Anybody out in the congregation got a song? Our old way best can be getting ready if they're going to play. Got one.
All right, we sent that out to Miss Carmen, Miss Joe. Uh, amen. She said them was the best looking group of magicians. Music. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. She ever saw them. And I agree with her, don't y'all? Amen. amen. Anyone else in the congregation got a song? Anybody speak now? All right, Dave. You got to come on right now. You pray for David. And like I said, let's pray for these that are not with us tonight that God will continue to bless and to touch. And we're looking that we come a time we get all these sick people well and they're back into the house of the Lord, right? Amen. 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 So just keep praying for each one of them that the Lord will touch. All right. Pray for Brother David. <laughs> I like this old song ever since I first heard it on the radio and got it off. And, uh, it's it's been a good one. I sure are. I am drinking from the well. Try this song right here. Shannon ends up watching her happens to be listening. This is a song that uh that he likes. Uh maybe PG, I'm not sure. I faced the mountain that I never faced before. That's why I'm calling all. Oh, it's been a while. Lord, please. 
Sometimes people can't praise God on the mountaintop. They don't praise until they go through valleys. I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound very bad. But I pray that if it takes a mountain or it takes a trial to make you get closer to God, and I pray he gives it to you. Because you're far too many people are falling away from God. They're forsaking God. If you can serve God on the mountaintop and glorify his name, then I pray that you're on the highest mountaintop and able to do so. But I pray that whatever it takes to get you back close to God is what happens in your life. You say, well, that sounds, that sounds rough. Well, no, time's running out. People need to stop playing around. Amen. This song right here is another one that uh, in a way goes along with it is uh, what it's talking about. Let's try to maybe be playing it. I don't know. It was time. I thought that I could conquer anything. I knew it all. I had nothing left to try. And blinded to disaster.
Across the river 
forever. They'll be new brains. I've got the But that's the best I can remember. It, amen. All those little things that's hung out there on that bar bar don't mean nothing to me. Amen. Uh, they, they, some of them's are sticking down, some of them's are sticking up, and some of them just sticking. Uh, so uh, it don't really matter. Uh, e flat on this one, do one more song. Amen. We're tired, body. I try not to let that show. <laughs> but uh, sometimes you just can't help it, can you? Uh, I'm just glad the Lord has been with us out throughout all the day. And heaven will be my home, that's what it's called. A storm within me raging, caught against my soul. But my faith is anchored in you, Lord, so things are in Thank you for all the folks that are listening and watching. 
remember my neighbor lost their mother and pray that the Lord would touch and help in their needs. Remember uh, David Woodard's family called and request him. Pray that the Lord would touch that. I tell you folks, if ever was a time that people need to get humble in prayers today. I need your prayers. Uh, I've been kind of anxious to, to pre preach a little on this tonight. and uh, uh, You know, when the, the devil try to uh, to dampen your spirit, try to drag you down, try to beat up on you on the flesh. He can't beat up on my spirit, but he keep beating up on me on my flesh. And uh, Amen. And but I, I'm just glad to know that I I got someone greater inside of me than the devil is. Ain't y'all? Amen. You know this verse by heart. The Bible said, "Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men." Whereby what ye must be saved. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, thank you, Lord, that you gave us this night. Thank you, God, for each home that's gathered here this evening. We realize, God, our old bodies is frail and weak, but our heart, God, is sound because we're standing upon the word of God. And Lord, this old body one day is going to have to release the soul and we're going to come on home to be with you. And Lord, there's going to come a time that we'll have a brand new body. And God, that's going to be a glorious time. No more pains, no more sorrow, no more death, no more COVID, no more disease, no more children suffering with cancer and all of these things and no more surgeries. Ain't you? I'm just praising you for that. But God, until then, give us grace to stand. Give us strength uh, to follow your will and to press on for your honor and your glory. God, we know not what tomorrow might bring or if there will even be one. But God, if there is and you let the sun shine upon us, we pray we'll be found faithful in the things of our God. Save the lost. God, touch the many that are sick. God, the, uh, the doctor's offices are flooded. The hospitals are flooded and uh, rest homes that need our, our prayers. And God, we do bring them to them today, the families that's lost their loved ones. God, bring comfort to them. God, most of all, wherever that soul is, this nearest eternity that's lost and on their way to hell, would you knock at their heart's door one more time, and may they'll hear and open the door and receive you as their personal Lord and Savior before it's too late. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you on that's what God said. Uh, I guess before we get started too much, the real question is this. Do you believe the Bible to be God's inerrant word? Amen. Do you believe today that it was written uh, by men, holy men that was moved upon by the Holy Ghost and that God uh, gave uh, them divine instructions and the Holy Spirit was watching uh, as this was written? Amen. Amen. You know, errant, the word errant means erring, wrong, or incorrect. But when we add this little prefix, y'all y'all didn't know I went back that far in school, did you? Uh -huh. I bet I could ask uh, some of these children what a prefix is, and they could tell me. Some of us old people have to think about it, right? When you add that little prefix to it today, friend of mine, then it reverses the meaning of the whole word. It becomes without erring or wrongness or without any incorrectness. And I, I want to say today this. I personally believe and accept God's word on those terms. Amen. I accept the word of God on the terms that it is without error. It, it is out without mistake. And it's not contradictory. Amen. The only contradiction you find in the Word of God is when man tries to butt in and, and, and put their views and try to override what God is saying. The Word of God will explain itself if you'll just study enough of it for it to do it. But if you go into the Word of God with a, a, a closed mind and a closed heart, if you go in here wanting to dissect the Word of God and take a word here and put it on in the Word of God, you can make it say anything you want to say, but friend of mine, the Word of God, the original still stands in heaven. It'll always come back to what God said. Amen. 
It don't matter what you think about it or I think about it today. I accept the Word of God on the terms of, of its correctness and without error and that it's inspired, that it's God's sin, and that it's God's Word spoken from His mouth given by divine inspiration through the Holy Ghost. I accept it that way. Amen. And it does not matter what the world's teaching. Uh, I, I believe it that way. It doesn't matter how many people have risen up and, and said this old King James Version has got many mistakes and I, I and try to change. It don't matter. I'm sticking with it. Amen. I'm sticking with it tonight. Uh, and you can choose what you want, but as for me, I'm sticking with it. In Psalm 118 and 89, the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's already settling it. There, there is no question about God's word in heaven tonight. Did you know that? There is nothing for God uh, to go back and redo. God don't need to reboot the Bible like you reboot your computer. God, God don't need to do that. In, in verse 105 of Psalms 119, which is the longest chapter in the Bible, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I accept it for that today. When I'm walking in darkness, it's because I have not let the Word of God be the lamp and the light of my life. Anybody that's walking in darkness today, friend of mine, has never come to the light or have turned their back on the light one way or the other out there today. Uh, it's a lamp, the Bible says, unto our feet, and a light unto our path. And, and we're instructed, and the Bible tells us not to be hearers uh, only of the Word, but to be doers of the Word of God. That's important today. People uh, like to hear, but where's the doing that today? Friend of mine, if we're hearing with a spiritual ear, it should inspire us to be a doer of what God is telling us to do. Are you listening tonight? So many people today don't want to be doers, amen. It requires action. It requires something on their part. In John's closing remarks in Revelation 22 and 18, he said, For I testified every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these words, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the pro a book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. We know that John is speaking about the book of Revelation. But I believe, friend of mine, that we can accept the fact that God feels the same way about all the word that he has given us. I believe God feels that way about Genesis all the way through Revelation. Friend of mine, it is a dangerous thing to add to or take away from the Word of God. And the world today is going to stand in judgment. Mankind is going to stand in judgment for the fact that they have uh, uh, deliberately altered what God said to bring people down a path that's going straight to destruction and not headed in the pathway of the truth. Let me ask you <coughs> something, excuse me. How does so many doctrines get written that seems to have such a great separation between them? How has that happened? How does so many religions get formed and, and they have so many different views of the Bible? How, can you answer, how does that happen? How, how, how come we have denominational barriers and, 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 and people just can't believe what the Bible says? Uh, uh, the Baptist is talked about by the rest and, and then the Bible talk, and the Baptist talks about the rest. Did you know that? Uh, how come we have so many uh, different things out there today? How come uh, uh, we can't just come together uh, in one mind and one spirit and accept what the Lord says? Amen. Accept the Bible. Amen. Uh, I, I feel that we got to conclude that the reason for this, it all comes down to the certainty that mankind has, has faltered in God's instruction not to add to or take away from the sins of the prophecy of his word. The reason that we have so many is they have changed what God said. You got Jesus only, Holy Ghost only, God only. Amen. Friend of mine, I, 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 I believe in, in one only. I believe in all three, but I believe they're one. What do y'all believe tonight? And why do I believe that? It has nothing to do with the Baptist, the Church of God, the Methodist, the Nazarene, Church of Christ, or any of the rest of them. It has everything to do with what God said. Amen. Are you listening at me today? You know, I, I thought about this. 
Who, who is to be found that could possibly benefit from mankind's misdirection? Who could possibly benefit? And, and, and I thought, only the devil and his followers. By blinding the eyes spiritually of people and hardening hearts through deceit and, and leading hearts to take a worldly view of these days here and, and failing to see that there's an eternity in the mind to things. You know, the, the people have turned away from the spiritual aspect of things. No one is, is worried about what the Bible says anymore. Everybody is living their life based on a worldly view. Amen. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. But, but what they need to realize is that the Bible teaches us they don't have to wait till tomorrow to die. Amen. Are you listening? The devil has led people in a worldly view. Why? That's what they want. People want to live a worldly life and think they're still going to heaven. Right? And, and, and many churches have compromised uh, because of the fear of losing their congregation. Uh, uh, preachers have compromised and their committees have compromised. They have changed the word of God. They've allowed stuff to be done in the church. But in the mind, they brought in all of the traditions of the world into the church in order to pacify the people that they would not lose their congregation. And empty beats with a spiritual ear is better than one that is hard-hearted and cold and refuses and rebels to understand and hear what God is saying in his word. Amen. Are you listening to me tonight? Amen. The devil, friend of mine, and his followers, every soul that the devil can rob, he will. He don't care who it is tonight. It hurts the very heart of God for any soul, any soul, Friend of mine, to leave this world unprepared and be forever separated with him. Not just us here in America, but it hurts the heart of God for any soul to leave this world unprepared to meet him and face an eternity of separation from him today. Amen. Listen, the devil doesn't get any type of reward for his handiwork, does he? Nowhere in the Bible do you see where uh, when the devil's judged that God's going to give him a bushel of rewards for the souls that he's led to hell. The devil's not going to get any kind of reward. A friend of mine, all he's getting is a feeling of vengeance. Vengeance. The devil has a vengeance toward God. God cast him out of heaven. He, he couldn't sit on the God's throne and God kicked him out and now he's the, the God of the air and, and one of these days he's even going to be kicked out of that and he's going to come down to the earth and, and he's going to sit on a, a, a throne in Jerusalem as he takes on the body of, of the Antichrist. We ain't got time to get in all of that study for yourself and he will be worshipped but it will come to an end. Amen. It will come to an end. And man, listen today, friends. When judgment is rendered, the Bible says that he's cast into the lake of fire. How many of y'all know that the devil is not immune to the damnations of hell? Amen. The devil's not going down into the, uh, 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 the torment of uh, uh, hell and, 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 and mocking people today. The devil's never been to hell. The father, uh, the, friend of mine, the devil wants to stay the farthest away from hell that he can because he knows what it's like. And one day he'll be cast in the lake of fire and death and hell and, and all. And, and every soul whose name is not found in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. I didn't say it, God did. And people out there preaching everybody's going to heaven. They're not. People are pacifying herself about homosexuals and all of this stuff and, and saying we're all God's children. We ain't. Amen. We're not God's children until we get born again. Then we become sons of God. Amen. Until then, friend of mine, we're just lost. We're out there today wandering around. Oh, God's got his eye on us, but we're not his children. We're his creation. But through the blood of Jesus Christ, we become sons of God. And without the blood applied, you'll never be a son. And when you get the blood applied, you'll change the way you're living. We all are sinners, preacher. Yes, we 
we are, but we must strive for perfection. We must change the life we're living. We must pick up our cross and we must look up and start doing God's will in our lives here today. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Think about that. You understand God's not the art of confusion, but the devil is. When there were there churches that sit in confusion, it's because the devil is playing around in the church. Amen. Do you know that? God's not the author of it, but the devil is tonight. Amen. Think about it. The, uh, the best way to lead anyone to destruction is to hide the fact that they're headed in that direction. The best way, friend of mine, for uh, me to make sure you get in trouble is to try to hide it to where you don't know you're going that way. Amen. The devil's good at that, isn't he? Amen. What is more easier for the devil to hide his dirty work than through religion? Religion. Did y'all understand? Religion won't carry you to heaven. Salvation will, but not religion. Religion. To give a heart something to believe in, something that they can feel is worth fighting for, even die for, even though it's entirely wrong. There are people out there today that given their life for things based on religion that is entirely wrong because God said it was. Amen. Are you listening today? Yeah, I'm going to say this. They ain't one of them Muslims that blowed herself up. Amen. Not a one of them got 70 virgins. Amen. Amen. Are you listening, man? Amen. And then, David, what about the women? They ain't promised nothing. Nothing. Huh. Amen. The, the, the guys promised 70 virgins, and, and, and the women ain't promised. I guess they're promised to be one of them. I don't know. And now, that's just one religion. There's others out there that are, are worshiping, friend of mine, uh, uh, things that they say, uh, they got doctrines that they say fell from the sky or an angel brought down and hid under a rock and, and all of this stuff. And, and they never research the truth today. Amen. They got those, friend of mine, that are under uh, uh, the thumb of dictatorship that has no freedom, no liberty. That goes to churches today that tells them what to wear, when to wear it, how, what kind of perfume to put on, what to eat on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, what time to go to sleep, what time to get up. Amen. Amen. You must be puny and spiritually if you are, are a member of some group of people like that. You listening? We, we, we got all these things out there today because nobody takes the time to see what God says today. Are you listening to me? The devil hides these things through religion. Amen. You know, some of these multitudes of religions has got just enough truth to bait the hook in such a way as to appeal to the heart and then consume them in spiritual darkness so that they stumble along the way and get farther and farther from the truth until they find themselves on a path of no return. They got just enough truth, amen. Uh, they'll quote just enough Bible to entice a heart to follow them. Amen. You can lead, you can lead a duck uh, with, with a grain of corn on a string. Amen. Once he starts following you, and he'll follow you right on up to the chop block where you're going to cut his head off. Do you know that? And, and that, that's the way a lot of these religions are. Just enough truth to bait the hook here tonight. You know, there's so many people that are brainwashed. And then some of them are so far out there, you wonder if they ever had a brain to wash. Amen. Amen. Some of them moony, can I? And when I say they're moony, that means they got a big old crevice between their ears that should have had a brain there. Amen. How sad. They have completely, friend of mine, engrossed himself in what they believe. And their conscience is seared, as the Bible says, with a hot iron. That means they're having, they have no feelings at all for what's right. 
There's people out there today that is fighting for the wrong side, believing they're on the right side. They have no conscience of what's right anymore. Amen. Anybody that can stand on the camera and, and say it was right, what's been going on as they've been going out and killing and beating people and burning cities and, and doing all, and say they're in the right, you're a complete idiot. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say it again. You're a complete idiot. Amen. You just don't know what's right anymore. Amen. People are so enraged because they feel good in doing it today. Amen. Feel good. Amen. Hey, you get in a, a heated discussion, as long as you're on the winning side, you feel good. Ain't that right? That's the same way with this bunch. Amen. They take a, a, a great big bunch of people and go out there and jump on one or two people. Amen. I uh, wonder what they do if the score was as many of them as, against them uh, as the ones they come up against. I wonder what you'd do then. Huh? Amen. It, it is sad today, friend of mine, uh, people uh, uh, get so big in numbers, but they're not very big when it's one-on-one, -on -one, are they? Amen. They hide behind bushes. Hide behind bushes, spiritually speaking. That's what the devil has got people doing today. Brainwashed. How can we know in the mind that we're right, we know in our heart that when we're not living our lives based on what we say or somebody else says, but what God has said. I'm not living my life based on what I say or someone has told me. I'm living my life based on what God says. When do you get your instruction? Every day. Amen. This Bible is as much a part of my daily routine as drinking coffee. I love coffee. But I love this more, don't you? It's a, it's a part of my daily life. I, I believe for you to be a, 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 a real Christian, dedicated and sold out wholly unto the Lord, it'll be a part of yours daily. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. A lot of folks don't want to hear that. Amen. If, if, if they put down the remote control and picked up the Bible, you'd be surprised what you'd learn. Hey, there ain't no fake news in this. It's all true tonight because God said it. Everything God said is me uh, is coming, is going to come, and ain't nothing the world can do to stop it. Did you know that? It don't matter who they sit on uh, on the president's seat. It don't matter who they got in these other countries. It don't matter what they say, how many laws they pass, what God said is going to be. When it's going to happen is up to God. That's why I'm praying for the Lord to change things. But if God don't change things tonight, I'll accept what he brings our way. Amen. Because he's still God, ain't you? Don't you know that? He's still God. Amen. Listen, I'll try to hurry on. Uh, amen. The Lord began to speak to me about this and and, and uh, he thrilled my heart when I, he gave me these things. I hope that I'm being some uh, help to you today. We know that we're right with God and when we doing what God has said, right? When we rehearse daily the scriptures that compel us to press on. And do you ever have to uh, pick up the Bible just to have enough strength to press on? You ever get so down and out, so a uh, friend of mine, and you, you feel like a snake belly in a wagon rut. Then you go to the Bible for God's instruction to press on. And God lifts you up and, and puts you back where you need to be today. Friend of mine, we look for the scriptures that reveal the love of God and, and those that instruct us to keep our eyes on the Lord. Those that give unto our hearts reassurance and hope because we know that's what God said. Amen. My hope is not in the world today and if it was the Bible said I'd be of all men most miserable if I only had hope in this life only. Amen. My Bible doesn't tell me to have hope in this world. My Bible tells me to have hope in the world that is to come. Amen today. Our scripture verse we read uh, to, has come under so much controversy. And even more so as, as the hearts of men are persuaded to turn a deaf ear to the truth. 
mankind and a friend of mine has laid down their cross and they've, t they've, they've got an attitude of doing things their own way. I thought about this. The misconception that there's many ways to heaven has become a sought after theory. People want to, want to see that. People want to believe that there's many ways to heaven because that allows them to keep living the life that they have chosen to live. Amen. It's a sought after theory. And it's one that's been put forth by false teachers, impressible celebrities, and people in high places, as well as ordinary people, everyday people. They, they just seek to reject God's plan and, and to live in the guidelines of his word. And as I said, their theory is eat, drink, and be merry and expecting all the rewards of heaven when death comes. That's what they're looking for. They have yet to come to the knowledge that they're on their way to hell. And there is no buy out. There is no pray out. There is no getting out. Amen. So they, they're falling in love with this theory. People are flattering themselves with, with this idea that there's many ways to heaven, uh, only to have an eye-opening experience when they step out in the eternity. How many people have died today believing there's many ways to heaven, but they wasn't on the right way Amen. when death comes? I'm going to tell you, when death comes, if you're going to heaven, you'll be on the right way or you won't go at all. If the road you're on didn't take you by the cross, you're not on the road to heaven. You're on the road to hell. I don't care how good you feel about what you're doing. Amen. If you didn't go by the way of the cross, if the blood has not been a part of, of your uh, 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 life, if you've not been cleansed, if you've not accepted the gift of God, you're not going to heaven. And that's as plain as a nose on your face. Sin and wrongness it's going to be exposed for what they are. And I believe hearts are going to be reminded for, for uh, and even haunted with a certainty of, of the things that God is saying. I believe people in hell are haunted today by the fact that God had told them in the word that whosoever believes on them could be saved. I believe they're holding with the fact that, friend of mine, God gave them a chance for a last dog to call. God put somebody in their path before death come. God let them listen to a message. God let them listen to a Sunday school teacher. God let them hear some old saint of God testify of how God's love changed them. But they refused, they rebelled, and they rejected. And death came, and in hell they looked in their eyes. Amen. Amen. How sad today. Are you listening? The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy 2 and 15. Study, be diligent. Are you diligent in your study? Be diligent. Rightly dividing is simply mean correctly handling the word of God in both the analysis and the presentation of the word of God. You, you, you can't speak about this book just any old way. You can't just bring forth any old opinion of this Bible. God wants you to study. God wants you to bring the mind to write and to it. God wants you to be serious in, in how you handle the Word of God and how you uh, uh, analyze it, how you believe it, and how you present it to other people today. Are you listening today? If, if you present this like you, you treat your Bible by throwing it around in the floor or hauling it around in, in the, uh, uh, up in the sun in your car. Or, or, I've seen preachers throw their Bible down in the floor. And I, 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 boy, if you throw mine down in the floor, we're going to have one of them spiritual discussions. Yours is all ragged. Well, that just means I use it. Why don't you get a new one? I got one, but I ain't through with this one yet. Amen. Amen. I, I still got pages in it. It's still got God's word in it. I, I still, I bring to mind turning and I get encouragement and I get enthused and I get lifted up. Amen. Why should I get rid of this? 
Amen. Well, you a pastor, you ought to make yourself a little more presentable. I'm not trying to please nobody but God. Amen. Amen. And God looking on the inside of me. Did you know that today? Amen. Well, I believe I'd get me one of them covers. What I want to cover it up for? What are you going to do when the tape rolls off? Well, I've done answered that problem. The other day I put on a brand new piece. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So get off your, your, your little judgmental road and let's just take God for what he says today. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, friend of mine, do, that we, we need to study and show ourselves approved unto God and rightly dividing the word of truth today. Amen. We're supposed to, uh, a friend of mine, as I say, uh, be, uh, be careful how we handle it and how we make our analysis and presentation and, and how we stand in contrast to the insane interpretation of the false teachers. You know, uh, there's a lot of teaching that's crazy out there. But people that don't know anything about the Bible can't dispute them. We're supposed to be in a position to dispute the devil. Are you listening to me? Hey, anytime somebody comes to your door and pulls their own Bible out of their coat pocket and wants to talk to you about it, tell them, oh no. Oh no. We ain't going to talk about Jesus in any book that your counsel has wrote, but we'll be glad to talk about Jesus in, that, in this old Bible right here. Amen. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. You know, if I'm going to stand toe to toe with the devil, I, I want my heart to know and have an understanding of what God said. Don't you? Amen. I, I don't win every battle, David. No, I don't. Sometimes I'm not spiritually where I need to be to have the victory. But there's many times that I am. And when I lose the battle, I hadn't lost the war. It just brings me back to my knees to I can get a greater understanding what the devil has brought before me. And then I can go to battle against the devil. But we don't win them all. But friend of mine, I'm glad God's with us through them all. Ain't you today? Amen. If we're going to stand toe to toe, we need to know, don't we? Sometimes when we feel that heavy pat on our back, it's not God's hand at all. Amen. Sometimes the devil will pat you on the back and just give you such a good feeling. You feel like super chicken that, that flew away before the axe cut his head off. Amen. I had one of them super chicken when I was a kid. Scared me to death. <laughs> that cartoon didn't come out. Super chicken. He'd go, baka, 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 baka. <laughs> and we was killing chickens. And I put that chicken's head down on that chop block and I took aim. I didn't, I, I must have needed glasses when I was very young. When I brought that axe down on that chick, somebody said, you're inhumane. It's better than doing this, ain't it? <laughs> we had to eat, folks. Uh, you go on down there to the store and get yours wrapped up. We had to, we had to uh, kind of skin ours so we could get them to eat. And I brought that hatchet down. Well, as a kid, all I was taught was cut his head off and throw it out there and let it flop till it quits flopping. Sometimes if mama was helping me skin one, well, she couldn't stand one if it moved. And sometimes if she was helping me skin one, we didn't pluck them. We skin one. I'd do like this. Boy, she'd get mad at me. <laughs> but I brought that axe down and I let that old chicken go and that chicken jumped up and balked at me. Now, it scared me to death. I thought, super chicken, sure enough. And, and they made me run that chicken down. And I had to run that chicken down. And bless God, the next time I brought that out, I didn't let him go till his head fell off. <laughs> Boy, you just have to bend there to get the full picture. Amen. You say, I don't think I won't. Well, amen. You know, there's a lot of people out there that knows exactly what I'm talking about. Then there's some of you folks out there that don't know Diddy. Amen. But sometimes you're patting yourself on the back and it ain't God. Sometimes when you feel that heavy pat on your back, it ain't God's hand. It, it's through the work of the devil as he entices us to promote ourselves, to exalt ourselves in a measure that we lose focus of reality. And, and a lot of that feel-good religion, that's all it is. I ain't got feel-good religion. 
I feel good because I've got God, but I ain't got feel good religion. Amen. Amen. That ain't how I got saved. I tell you one thing, David, I didn't feel a bit good when I got saved. Uh, on my way to the altar, I felt the worst I've ever felt in my life. I was guilty and ashamed. Uh, uh, my sin was exposed. I was convicted. I didn't walk up to the altar popping my chewing gum grinning like I went to sleep with a clothes hanger sideways in my mouth. I didn't walk up to the altar scuffling around with the ones around me. Brother, I went to the altar with business. I was on my way to hell and I didn't want to go. Amen. Amen. And I didn't get feel good religion. I got salvation. It made me feel good. But I'm not saved by my feelings. I'm saved because the blood has cleansed me. I'm sealed by the Holy Ghost. I've got feelings, but that ain't what saved me. Are you listening today? Man, sometimes you need to examine who that hat on the back is from. Everybody wants to feel good about themselves, whether they deserve it or not. Right? Let me say a few things before we close. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men. Whereby he must be saved. Neither what? Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is what? None. None what? None other name. Given among men. Must. Whereby we must be saved. God's not giving us an option, Aaron. People are trying to uh, 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 go to heaven based on options. God's not giving us an option. God's given us a clear directive. Amen. There's no other name. There's no other way. If you're going to get to heaven, this is what God said. Are you listening today? This is a powerful verse that has been mishandled. It's been overlooked. It's been rejected. It's even been ignored and to enable the hearts of man to be led astray. Amen. This verse doesn't declare any religion to be right. Nowhere in that verse can you show me any religion declared to be right. It don't. And nowhere, friend of mine, uh, uh, does this verse, friend of mine, uh, give any doctrine a thumb up. Thumb up. It doesn't. Does it? Amen. It gives us a perfect understanding of what's necessary to be saved. If we're all going to heaven then we must be on the same road. Right? The same road if we're going to get there. We got to lay aside, friend of mine, our way. We got to accept God's way. We got to consider for a moment the power of this one verse. It casts a light upon all other ways it's being taught. It exposes, friend of mine, the lies that have caused the eyes to look uh, toward traditional gods rather than the living God. This one verse does all of that. It exposes false teachings. It exposes false doctrine. It exposes other gods for what they are. Amen. How can we know this to be true? Because it's what God said. Amen. Amen. It exposes the failure of all these beliefs, the worship of other gods, friend of mine, the failure to produce what's necessary for everlasting life. There is no religion that can promise you everlasting life guaranteed by what God said, except the plan of salvation that God has given us. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Believeth in who? Believeth in him. Amen. That does away with all of Muhammad, Reverend Moon, and Buddha, Reverend Correct. It does away with all of them. Amen. Amen. It does it away with these modern day apostles and prophets. It does away with the fact that a church says, unless you're a member of my church, you're going to die and go to hell. That is bull and hogwash. Amen. 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 Are you listening to me today? I'll hurry. God knows this is a this is a rabbit you can run for a while. There is a way, the Bible says, that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Solomon actually wrote the same verse twice in different chapters. The flesh is so easy to be persuaded. 
The conscience knows what to do right. You heard that old saying all your life, let your conscience be your guide. That's your innermost being. Your conscience knows to do right. But the flesh, friend of mine, seeks to satisfy the lustful desires that only offer temporary satisfaction. The desires of the flesh, friend of mine, can only be satisfied for a moment at a time. Amen, right? A drunkard satisfies their, their taste for a little while. And then after they get up the next morning and puke their guts out, they poke it all back down and start all over again. Amen. But think about the addictions of life. They're just temporary. You can't live without them once you get started on them. The flesh is so easily led astray. Amen. How many times have you heard uh, somebody say, well, I'm not going to I'm not gonna start drinking, but I, I believe I can handle one at a time or I can. How many people that stuck dope say, well, I'm just going to do it one time. How many people are laying in an early grave because it was only going to do something one time? How many people, we all thought, we all thought we was bigger than the friend of mine than the issue. Amen. We thought we've seen other people that will surrender to this, but it wasn't going to happen to us. Is that right? It just ain't going to happen to me. But it does. It does, doesn't it? There's people out there today, friend of mine, it's happened to. Maybe some under the sound of my voice. And you know it. And there's only one way out. There's only one escape, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wayne's testimony about how God changed him and, and the life that he is living and God did it all. God did it all because he surrendered his life wholly unto the Lord. I'm going to close in a minute, Joseph, if you want to get a song. You know, the flesh is prone to think that a friend of mine, it can have the best of both worlds, doesn't it? When something comes along that, that makes this offer, some religion or some false doctrine, then people are so ready to jump on the bandwagon without any question. You know, uh, when uh, Demetrius and them stirred that, started that stir there in Ephesians or Ephesus, a friend of mine against Paul and them and, and brought an accusation against them that they were, uh, uh, you know, going to uh, destroy their, their craft and how they were throwing off on the temple of, of, of there in Ephesians. Amen. You know that them people got in an uproar and, and, and for all that time, seemed like it was two hours, that they stood and they hollered and they hollered and they hollered and some of them didn't even know what they were hollering about. We're living in a world today where people are hollering and don't know what they're hollering about. Amen. 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 People don't want nothing to do with the church. Amen. That's because they just ain't found the right church yet. If you ever find the right church and get under the sound of the gospel and hear what Jesus says and feel what the Spirit of God is will do in your life, you'll change. Amen. Amen. I, I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to go for them that has got so many rules and regulations either. I want to go where I got freedom to worship God as God leads me to worship today. Are you hearing me? I, I want to go where I can say, Amen! Praise the Lord! Bless you! Bless you! Amen. Amen. I don't want to go where they say, Bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, well, what about respecting the church? The church is the house of God. Amen. And we are the children of God. And when I come into God's house, you know what God lets me do? Make myself at home. Amen. I like to eat at his table. I like to drink from the cup of his blessings. Don't y'all? Amen. Amen. I like to fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I like to sing about him, talk about him, preach about him, shout about him, and let him be everything in my life. What about you? Amen. When I come to his house. Amen. Are you listening? <laughs> Boy, I could preach on that, but I won't. We got to get some of these kids home where they can go to school, right? Amen. I want to understand you to know this. That's for a lot of people, do you realize the title of Christianity is all that matters, whether there's any evidence that they are one or not? Just a title. 
Just a title. People will say, you go to church? Oh, yeah, I go down in old way. Well, who's the pastor? Well, I don't know. I've been here 31 years. <laughs> We, we do that all the time. We'd be in somebody's house and, and we, we'll say, you go to church? Oh, I go to such and such a church. Well, there's old brother so-and-so down. Well, I don't know who the pastor is, but uh, <laughs> you might not know everybody in the church, but bless God, you are to know who the pastor is. Amen. I mean, his name is usually on the sign. <laughs> Brother well, William Collins stopped at the Red Barn and the church wasn't here then. It's up yonder and he invited this old boy to church. He said, oh, I go to church. He said, well, I'm glad to hear that. He said, where you go? He said, I go to Old Way. William said, I've been going up there. I forget how many years. He said, I've been going up there all that time and I ain't seen you yet. <laughs> oh, I ain't got to go lately. <laughs> Amen. Let's just get, get down to where it's at. Amen. Our hearts just ain't right with God, are they? Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us here that there is no salvation any other way except through Jesus Christ. If there's no salvation, that means there's no saving grace, no ability to forgive sins, no rescue of any soul that's on their way to hell except through Jesus Christ. Are you listening today? There's no uh, friend of mine, if there's any under the sound of my voice that has trusted in another name, Given your devotion to someone else, you're still lost and on your way to hell. If you're worshiping any other God, you're lost and on your way to hell. Not what I said, what God said. There is no other name, none other name under heaven given among them. I, nobody, nobody. There's been a lot of good people in this life, but there's only been one Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, a lot of good people done a lot of good things, but ain't nobody ever shed their blood to save nobody except Jesus. There's only been one Lamb of God, that was Jesus. If we believe God's word to be without error, if we believe it to be the ultimate truth and unchanging, then we can declare by what he has said that all religions that base their trust on some other name or person is a false religion. Huh? It's a false religion. Amen. I better get a lot of comments on that today. Go ahead. Amen. What did God say? What are you going to do with that? One little verse. Amen. I didn't get in all the chapter. I didn't get into where they were preaching and teaching and telling about the resurrection and, and, and what the Lord can do. Then one little verse. One little verse is enough to make anybody, a friend of mine, mad if they devoted themselves to some other God that's not really God at all. Amen. False religion. Amen. John said, or Jesus said in John 14 and 6, y'all know it by heart, I am the way, not a way, the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh to the Father except by me. You cannot be introduced to God the Father except through the blood of God the Son. Amen. <laughs> Amen. No other way. No other way. And I said the other week, Romans 10 and 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. Verse 13 of Romans 10 said, whosoever believeth in him shall be saved. Right? Amen. Or whosoever shall call upon the, the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe, call. There's no other way. If, you, if you're trying to get there any other way, you're, you're not going to make it today. There's no other way. Nobody has given a self a sacrifice for sin except Jesus Christ. And if you omit that in your life, then friend of mine in hell, you'll lift your eyes. If you don't, if you're not basing your life on what this Bible says, then you're not living your life God's way. It's that simple tonight. Amen. That simple. Oh, I know. Uh, they don't preach this up and down the roads. They're afraid they're going to get in trouble. I'm, uh, amen. I'm not worried about getting in trouble. I've been in trouble all my life. That's the reason my last name starts with a T. <laughs> amen. 
I've been in trouble with the devil all my life. Hey, David, I, I, I've been around preachers that just didn't believe what this book said and wanted to try to convince me to see it their way. Well, they didn't. Amen. Amen. What happened? They went their way and I went mine. They walked their way, I'm walking God's way. Amen. What makes you any different than them? I believe what he said. Amen. Not what they said. What about you here tonight? There's nobody 100% right all the time. Amen. We, we all falter. I falter. I, I say names wrong. I, 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 sometimes I might preach a, a, a half a message and, and try to preach about Paul, and I might call him Peter five times. But if you studied, you'd know I was talking about Paul. Uh, don't you just love them when you start out the church? Say, well, preacher, we enjoyed that message, but why did you keep calling Paul Peter? I thought well, I started saying, well, bless God, that's just to keep you to listing what I had to say. Amen. If I said Paul all the time, you'd have quit listing. Huh? Amen. Word pronunciation. I'm, I'm the world's worst on word pronunciation. Amen. I don't put them little little marks where they're supposed to be. Sometimes I make a long E a short E. Sometimes when it's supposed to be a short A, I make it a long A. You know, now somebody said, well, don't you want to study and pronounce their names right? Amen. I'm not preaching to them. They knew what their name was and they're dead to go. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't worried about calling their name, amen. Uh, whoever I'm calling their name out to, you didn't know them no better than I did. <laughs> so why are you so worried about whether I got it right, huh? Amen. Well, I better us. Rose is getting stirred up back there. <laughs> amen. Beyond a doubt, there's none other name. Beyond a doubt, friend of mine, there's no other way except through Jesus Christ. And that's what God is saying. Like I said, any religion or doctrine that focus on any other way, any other person than Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son, it is false and it has no redemptive virtues at all. Amen. None, none so ever, none so ever. Amen. It's through Jesus. And that's the way it is tonight. It's not what I said, it, but it's what God said. There is no other way. Amen. We're going to close. I hope we've said something to help you out there tonight. Amen. The devil didn't want me to preach on that, but I did. By God's grace. Amen. We just have a small crowd here tonight, but I hope I've said something to help them. To make them glad to come to church. I hope I've said something to make you glad that you left us on and listened to the end. But now it's time to pray for whatever need that's in our hearts. It's time to pray. Maybe it's because of our lack of study. Maybe it's because of our lack of praying. Maybe it's because, friend of mine, we've, we've let the devil defeat us too many times too often. God wants us to be strong. The Bible says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, whereby not that the world may know, but whereby ye may know that your labor is not in vain. I want to know, don't you? I want to know that my labor is not in vain. Therefore, I want to be steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in his work. Shabbat you hear while he plays a song. If you're here and you got a prayer to pray, come on. Every man the altar's wide open. Come on. If you're out there and don't see no The altar's wide open. All you got to do is just pray. All you got to do is just seek the face of Jesus. Call upon the night that has power and authority. I don't know nobody's heart today. I believe God says the best. What you do with it is up to you. See, I'm just a messenger. I, I don't enforce the message. I just claim the message. I leave it in the hands of God and the Holy Spirit. What's it going to be tonight? We're fixing to pray. You feel like everything's well enough to walk out the door just like you are. It's all up to you. Father, I thank you that you allowed us this time. Thank you, God, that you let us stand, give us strength. God, thank you that you've opened to my understanding your precious word. Realizing today, God, that when you stand against the devil, Lord, there's, there's much that will come against you. 
Well, I'm glad we have the truth. And the Bible says the truth will set us free. And I'm glad of that tonight. We're not in bondage, God, to the ways of man. We're not enslaved to the things of the world. We're not living our life based on what thus says so and so. But we want to live by what you have told us. And let this Bible be the lamp and the light in our life that it needs to be. We want to draw our strength from you, God. When we stand on the word, we'll not fall. God, we believe that today. That's power in the word. And oh God, we claim tonight victory over the things that we combated with. We claim victory tonight over the things that uh, people have asked us to help us pray about. Sickness and heartaches and sorrow, family problems, death. Oh God, we bring our nation to you. We bring our church. We just want to be what you'd have us to be. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sign that course. The crown of life. And friends, the friend two way. So the old cross road. On the way to all the strength. Just one way. To the pearly gate. Amen. Y'all believe that? Give the Lord praise and mind. God is so good. I hope everyone out there in the unseen audience got a blessing out of uh, being with us tonight. I hope everyone in the church has. We do pray for our sick folk that's not here and those that are watching. We do pray and thank you for being with us. We got church members and folks that are watching tonight. And we do appreciate them from the bottom of our heart. Amen. All right. Until Sunday morning, 7.15, may God bless you. Goodbye, Facebook.